You're watching Talkin' Ducks, built by Par Lumber. Talkin' Ducks is presented by Pacific Clear Vision Institute and Les Schwab Tire Centers. Welcome into another edition of Talkin' Ducks and a lot to get to. Of course, Oregon falling to Utah in the Pac-12 Championship game, but the news that shrouds all of that, Mario Cristobal out as head coach at Oregon. He leaves to go to Miami to take over their head coaching job. Now a huge vacancy for the Ducks who's going to be the next potential candidate. And amongst this entire mess, they still have a bowl game, the Alamo Bowl against Oklahoma. But let's go ahead and get to the opening drive brought to you by Les Schwab Tire Centers, doing the right thing since 1952. And with that, we welcome in Aaron Fetris from the Oregonian, Joey Harrington, and joining us, the former ball coach, head coach Mike Bellotti. And guys, let's just start with this. Mario Cristobal leaving Oregon. How shocked were you by this and how quickly this transpired? I mean, this is just massive, a huge hit for the Ducks. Zero shocked here. First of all, the day they hired Mario Cristobal, literally, I was at the press conference. He talked about his mom being in Miami. I already knew he had played at Miami. I knew he had coached at Miami already. I knew he was from Miami. And I tweeted that day, fans need to hope that Miami remains really good because if the Miami job ever comes open and Cristobal is, a, is doing well at Oregon, He's gone. Book it. It's done. I was ridiculed for that, but it was obvious. The guy from Miami played at Miami, won a national title or two at Miami, I think, was an assistant coach at Miami. Green and orange run through this guy's blood, and his mom, who is ailing, is still in Miami. His wife's family from Miami. There was no way at any point in time ever that he was not going to go to Miami if this job came open. So, no, I have zero at all surprise whatsoever. I was told that this was being started to work out three weeks ago, negotiations began. Once this job became open, became available, Mario was gonna be their target and he was gonna accept it. So zero shot. Yeah, I, I don't see how anybody could be surprised by this for, for exactly your, your point there, Aaron. Um, there's something different between having a connection to something that you're building or something that you've built for, you know, four years and having a a blood connection right this isn't like this isn't choosing to go to ohio state or michigan or usc or like a blue blood program that you could look at and say okay let's compare apples to apples here this is this is him this is his heart this is his his upbringing this is you know everything about i mean if i was if I was playing, I always said, you know, when I was playing, God, I wish there was a team in Portland because I'd, I would do anything to come back and play professional sports in, in Oregon. I mean, this is, this is a logical choice. This makes sense. And I, I honestly think that if you aren't surprised by this, then I don't want to say you've, you've got your head under a rock, but like you, you're truly not comprehending the entire situation. And, and, and maybe, and, and I think, Coach, maybe you could speak to this a little bit, the idea of, this idea of Oregon being the perfect job. And everybody from Oregon thinks that this is the best job and the most incredible job. I mean, you were one who, who did take a look at some other jobs out there. And, and maybe you could speak to what coach, or what people feel here uh, to be the, the greatest job in the world, and why would anybody leave it? <laughs> well, uh, honestly, I but I do think there was a lot more thought and grinding over this by Mario Cristobal and his family. The reality is, is it going home? Yes, absolutely. But Miami's not the program that Oregon is right now. Now, can it be down the road? Possibly, but it's going to take a lot of work. Part of the thing that he put in as a player and a coach a long time ago. So there is that thing. This time of year is always difficult for every coach. You're either being courted for a job if you've done well. Your assistants are being courted for a job. You have the signing date coming up. You've got a bowl game you're preparing for. It's the most unbelievable, stressful time. And you can't be in all places at once. You're trying to go recruiting and you're not practicing. You're waiting for your bowl assignments, all those type of things. Uh, I do understand Mario going home. I understand the, the allure. But I do think somebody said it wasn't about money. It's always about money. <laughs> They're the money. created the opportunity to say, okay, they're going to give me this. They're going to bring in an athletic director that knows what he's doing, can raise funds. We're going to build this thing. So there's a there's a pull to that. You know, the going up part for any coach who's ever been in an ascending program is the most fun. It's where you really 
generate the gratitude and the feeling of, wow, we really accomplished something. When you get to the top, it's very hard to stay there. And that's the most difficult thing in the world. And I don't know that Mario thought he got to the top, but he's certainly been a dominant recruiter. Uh, he hired good coaches. He's always going to need to hire good coaches because he may need that help from a football standpoint. He does need that help. And when your head football coach is the best recruiter on your staff and one of the best in the nation, you always have a chance. Miami is a very prestigious private school. And when they were winning, there were a lot of shenanigans going on. You had Shapiro guy with the Ponzi scheme. We run around throwing money around, right? Even before that, you had so many recruiting issues that Sports Illustrated had an article, a cover story saying that Miami should receive the death penalty. So the university pulled back a little bit on making football such a priority because they wanted to clean that madness up because it was embarrassing the university. Well, they've fallen off clearly since then. But apparently... According to reports, there are multiple big-time donors, billionaires even, who are writing blank checks to Miami to say, let's bring Miami back, do it cleanly, of course, but let's bring it back. Stealing the AD from Clemson is a game-changer, and then bringing back Mario sets them up for a situation where they can do similarly to what Oregon did when Phil Knight really got involved, and they had a very good young coach named Mike Bellotti running the show. So I think, or, I think Miami's going to have big things ahead of them. I think it's a great choice for him for a program that's going to be ascending, that he's going to help build, and like you said, coach that's part of the the joint the the joy of coaching and he's going to enjoy doing that more at Miami than even he was at Oregon one final thing and fans need to understand this I, I know Oregon fans love them some Oregon and I appreciate that there are teams I love as well you see a Chicago Bears helmet behind me but I guarantee you Mario Cristobal Mario Cristobal loves Miami more than any fan loves Oregon because he played there and he grinded there and he suffered and sweated there with his boys and his teammates and he still has friends there. So think of it that way. As much as you love Oregon, he loves Miami more. Plus, let me say this. Mario Cristobal is an intelligent coach. He worked under Nick Saban, who has one of the best systems, the process, all of that stuff going. He understands he would not have gone back to Miami unless all those things were in place. 100%. The support, the administrative support, the commitment to making football important again. And as it is at Oregon, but we have to understand too, Oregon, seven weekends a year, Autzen Stadium is one of the greatest places in the world. But the remaining weekends, the rest of the year, most of the country in the Big Ten, the ACC and the SEC, trump Pac-12 football in terms of intensity, concern, interest, the fans are there all the time, and it's a whole different entity, whole different world. Great stuff, guys. When we come back on Talking Ducks, we'll talk about how this entire situation was handled. What was true, what wasn't true, what was leaked, how people responded. It's a lot to sort out when we come back on Talking Ducks. With nine locations in the Pacific Northwest, Paris Cabinet Design Center features everything from outdoor cabinets and countertops to sinks and hardware, thousands of door styles and colors available to order, as well as kitchen and bath cabinets in stock, all available at the Par Cabinet Design Center. Hi there, it's Les Schwab Tires, reminding you that changing seasons can mean changing road conditions. Introducing the brand new Backcountry AT2 for a quieter ride with improved performance in wet conditions. Because when it comes to keeping your family safe, the right tires help you feel prepared for anything. Seriously, anything. Now save up to $130 when you buy Quattrac tires with financing. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. Being able to get LASIK gave me the opportunity to not worry about putting contacts in every day and um, just kind of made my life a little easier. Pacific Clear Vision Institute was just incredible through my entire experience. The staff was very welcoming. Uh, Dr. Embody, he really just kind of laid it out and made me feel comfortable and, and gave me confidence to know that I was in good hands. I would definitely recommend Pacific Clear Vision Institute for any sort of laser eye surgery. Welcome to your capital Toyota. From the moment you walk through the doors, we're here for you. Buy, sell, trade. We got you covered. It's everything you need in one place. Great service, check. Easy to work with, check. We want you to be happy and it shows in everything we do. Because we respect your time. It's all the quality and convenience in one package. New or Toyota certified pre-owned. Our people are your people. Capital Toyota, it's your way on the parkway. Stories tell us that great leaders are anointed at birth, chosen by the hand of fate. But those are just stories.
and you're watching Talking Ducks, built by Par Lumber. Welcome back. Time now to get to the post-game cuts, brought to you by Par Lumber. Par Lumber, go where the builders go. Here's Mario Cristobal following Oregon's loss to Utah in the Pac-12 title game regarding the coaching rumors and whether or not he was going to go to Miami. Yeah, I don't know what you're into. When you say someone's offered, I haven't talked to anybody. So let's not create narratives, okay, as we sit here in this press conference. So Oregon is working on some stuff for me, and that's what I have right now. And that's the extent of that conversation. Joey, let's start with you on this. How do you think Mario handled this entire situation? So I was actually in Miami, not university, the Dolphins, with Nick Saban, his final year there, where he was negotiating with Alabama to leave at the end of the season. And people criticized him like crazy afterwards. Like, how could you, you know, sit here and tell us that you're not going to be the next head coach at Alabama and then as soon as the season's done, end up being the next head coach at Alabama? And I'll tell you why. Because Nick knew that he had a job to do. That he had a responsibility to us as players. And just because he may have wanted to go to Alabama or go take a different job, right? Everybody's sitting in an office and said, hey, you know what? Maybe I'd like to go work somewhere else. But you still have a responsibility to your job right there. And people have been saying to me this morning, you know, well, I'm just upset at how he handled it. Why he had the opportunity to say something a couple weeks ago and he didn't say anything. Are you, you seriously think that coming out and saying three weeks ago, you know, I've started negotiating a contract or negotiations with uh, my agent and the University of Miami. I've started that, just letting everybody know. You think that would be good for his job performance right now? You think that would be good for, for his team to prepare for the big games that he had coming up? Look, he had a job to do. He did his job the best way that he knew how while still preparing and listening to an offer to go take a job that interested him more. There, I have absolutely no problem with how Mario handled this situation. The interesting thing though, and Fentress, you and I were talking about this last night, on Miami's end, the athletic director, or I should say, Miami gave Mario a contract offer from an athletic director who had not yet been hired by the university to replace a coach that had not yet been fired from that university. And they offered a coach who was already under contract with another university. I mean, just the way that Miami went about this, you can look at it. It was like, my, it was like something out of Miami Vice or Scarface. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a little bit of like, huh, I kind of see what's going on here, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. That, that, this, look, this is the world of college football. Everybody wanted to go chase a big time coach and we're going to need to move on from loyalty and, you know, get rid of health and move on. This is the world of college football now. This is the world that Oregon has chosen to go into. And so, um, we don't get to say that we're disappointed or upset at how somebody left our school because this is the world of college football right now. One thing you left out when you talked about how Mario handled things is recruiting. Because he, you can't say, well, I'm thinking about, yeah, I've talked to, you really can't say that in recruiting. You have to keep the party line is I'm doing what I need to do for recruiting in the bowl game and getting my players ready to go. And at the same time, you don't discuss that. Your agent discusses all that. That's all going on behind the scenes. So technically, he probably didn't talk to anybody, but there's talks being done by somebody else for him in that regard. The other thing, too, is you, you just I've been there. I've been in that situation and I didn't have an agent. So I talked to the people directly and I told the University of Oregon when I was contacted by somebody and if I had interest and if I was going to pursue it. And I tried to make it as fast as possible, simply because I wanted to know where I needed to put my efforts and my energies and everything else. And it's it it sounds bad, but it's the reality of this world. Plus, with the portal. And with the NILs now, a lot of stuff is outside your control as a coach. There, the portability to go anywhere, you don't even know if you're going to have your own team back next year. And the reality is, I'll get into recruiting later on and we're going to talk about it. But I think Mario did everything he could to keep it under wraps while evaluating the situation, knowing that if Oregon came up with a better offer, it was going to make that decision even that much more difficult. But his heart was probably still in Miami. I find it, I, I've always found it really um, difficult to figure out how you would go about this in a clean way. Like I remember Chip Kelly at the festival 
And I believe I asked him about, you know, the rumors out there that he was being contacted by the Browns and the Eagles. And he said he hadn't talked to anybody. Well, we, you know, a week two later, he was gone. So clearly someone was talking to somebody. And then, of course, hey. with, with Tag, yeah, yeah, exactly. But there's the whole, that, the whole dancing around, well, I haven't talked to anybody, but your agent has, right? Tagger did the same thing. Tagger was claiming he hadn't talked to Florida State up until the day he left. And then at his press conference at Florida State, he talked about talking to Florida State the previous Thursday. Like, so he didn't handle it necessarily well. But again, how do you go about talking to one team where you may go or you may not? Because you never know if they're really going to come through the, with the offer you want. And then also not any, completely alienate where you are. If you come out and say, oh, yeah, I'm talking to Miami. I'm thinking about leaving. And then it falls through. You're screwed. You can't, so you can't set it up that way. All right. When we come back, we'll talk about how big of a loss this is for the Oregon program. Obviously, Cristobal leaves. Who else goes with him? The impact it has on recruiting. We'll break it all down when we come back on Talking Ducks. Do you have a stay-at-home project? We can help. Contact PAR from the comfort of your home. Get a free quote online or call a pro to order your materials. And the best part? We deliver. Call us or visit PAR.com for details. PAR, your project experts for 90 years. Since 1961, Comfort Flow Heating has provided service to more than 50,000 homes and businesses in the Willamette Valley. While the technology and techniques in our industry have changed, our founding principles have remained the same. To provide exceptional service in all areas of our business and for our customers to enjoy their products from us and be comfortable for years to come. From all of us at Comfort Flow, thank you for choosing us. Go Ducks! <laughs> Eugene Airport is a proud part of what makes Western Oregon such a unique place to be. With nonstop routes that connect to hundreds of destinations, fly local, fly EUG. In the heart of the South Willamette Valley, just 12 miles southwest of Eugene, distinctive handcrafted wines are waiting for you at Sylvan Ridge Winery. Sylvan Ridge Wines bring unassuming, casual elegance to your homes, tables, and celebrations, and are best paired with the mainstays of a social gathering. Good food, fond friends, and lively conversation. Discover our wines by visiting our tasting room. For a list of events or to plan your visit, go to sylvanridge.com. Proud partners of the Oregon Ducks. Sometimes, leadership is scary. But so is regret. You're watching Talking Ducks, built by Par Lumber. Welcome back. It's time to put things into focus. Brought to you by Pacific Clear Vision Institute, the official eye doctors and eye surgeons of the Oregon Ducks. And guys, let's talk about how big of a loss this is for Oregon. You look at the top 10 classes, a Rose Bowl championship, a couple of Pac-12 championships. How does Oregon fill this void now? It's a major loss. I think anytime you lose a head coach who's put together that type of winning seasons, winning records, bowl games, et cetera, and the recruiting cachet, uh, number one ranked class, three to three of the four years, uh, top 10 in the nation, all that type of thing. That's a significant loss that you can't make up because now players will follow coaches. They don't commit to universities or institutions or buildings. They commit to people. So the reality is uh, that's a difficult thing. And I, I don't know, certainly Oregon is have to move fairly quickly if they want to salvage this recruiting class and they may not be able to anyway. But I do think it's a significant loss. People are not going to say, don't let the door hit you on the way out. The difficult thing is the last game is not certainly the greatest game that Mario wants to walk away uh, with that on his epitaph. But the reality is he's a very, very good football coach and a great recruiter that Oregon will miss. You know, I agree. Uh, it definitely hurts for a lot of different reasons. Disruption clearly hurts. But Oregon's had disruption in the past, and they've come out of it okay. Like, I, you know, what Willie Taggart did was as shocking as you could have happen to you, a guy leaving after one year, and they fell into Mario, who clearly has done a good job since. So I, while I believe he's a very good coach, I don't believe he's irreplaceable. Like, I think they can go out and get someone. 
you know, I have names I like, but let's just say they get the Baylor guy, Aranda. Let's say they pull him. I mean, that, that would be a huge hire. He's successful already. Um, you bring in some good assistants who can recruit. Oregon, in a lot of ways, recruits itself, especially when they changed the rule years ago. Actually, I think the year Taggart took over where you could pay for families and parents to come out uh, to the campus, which I was told wasn't a thing before that. So I think you can find someone who, A, is going to be just as good with X's and O's, and B, maybe not as an elite recruiter as Mario is, but you're going to get someone close, plus you still have the pull of Oregon. So again, very good, but not irreplaceable. So I got to admit, my in, in listening to you guys, and, and especially you, Coach, um, hey. I don't know what's in my perspective. Is, no, I don't even like you, Aaron, <laughs> let alone value your opinion. Um, <laughs> but I will say I often agree with you. Um, when you said it's a huge loss, and I was trying to, oh, well, yeah, yeah, I had that thought. Well, if Coach Bellotti thinks it's a huge loss, maybe maybe it is. And then I, I, I don't know. Here, here's my thought. Yes, is it a huge loss as a losing a head coach? Absolutely. The face of the program, absolutely. Fantastic recruiter, yes. But we won as a program with, I'll call subpar recruits, right? I, I had two scholarship offers. We won with the Josh Two, two men. No. And, you know, we, we won with the Justin that. Peels. <laughs> and we won with... Um, you know, Rasuli Webster's and Wes Mallard's and guys who who bought in, right? So, and 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 with that being said, all these five star and, and, and you know, Aaron, you and I talk about you know recruits and how much I I hate recruiting. A lot of the a lot of the criticism this year has been, well, we've got this giant stacked roster of four star, five star, the most incredible talented recruits. Why aren't we better on offense? So I keep, I keep coming back to this idea of, yes, is it a loss? Absolutely it is. But I'm not devastated. And, and I'm actually not even um, worried. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit hopeful because I think that there's some hindsight, some perspective that has been gained in the last, I guess, two coaching cycles, right? We'll call it Willie, you know, even though it was one year. But they've had two opportunities to hire a head football coach. And I would like to think that at this point, you've got enough of a sample size to say, this is who we were, and this is what we turned it into. This is what we became after firing Mark, and this is where we stand. How can we find the best way going forward? And I don't think it's necessarily all of one or all of another, but I think this gives us the... Rob and, and the athletic department an opportunity to find that path. Remember, we have played for or won the Pac-12 championship, what, three of the four years or four of the four years. The reality, I think it is a, a, a greater loss than you think. Ten, when we say a 10-win season is not that good, I think, or not up to our standards, I think we have to say where are our standards now. I think this team, I, I talked to a coach on the staff, they are really excited about the young talent. Now, I think talent only takes you so far. Chemistry, unity, all of the things you just talked about are so very, very important. But I will tell you, if you ask 100 coaches, 99 would say, I'll start with talent. I'll take talent to start with. I'll build the unity, the chemistry, et cetera. It's a lot easier when you have great players that can run fast, jump high, and do all those things. The reality is, I think we are going to miss Mario in, his, in terms of recruiting. Will we find another very good coach? Yes, absolutely. You mentioned Aranda. I've got a list of four or five that I can throw out there that I think would fit the bill and would be perfect. But it, there will be change. And that change, once again, getting a new staff together, it's not always an immediate success. It takes sometimes a year or two to meld, to mesh, to, to figure out who the quarterback should be or what kind of quarterback you're going to recruit. What type of offense are you going to run? And defense usually is more reactive. Offense, you can sort of say, we're going to be an up-tempo spread mobile quarterback. We're going to be a, two, a multiple tight end, more pro style. You have to decide that, and you have to recruit to that. Now, with the portal, you can make some immediate adjustments, but it's still, that's a little bit like what Dana Altman is going through this year with basketball. He's been so successful at taking a group of kids, putting them together and having them be successful, even when it's three transfers and two veterans and whatever. Not here. Don't go anywhere. When we return, we'll hear from Rob Mullins on where the university stands with the coaching search and also some Chip Kelly rumors. Might the visor make a return back to Eugene? 
We'll let you know when we come back. Car Lumber is committed to providing the best customer service. We provide personal service. We're problem solvers. We're positive and courteous. We're competent and professional. We are committed to delivering exceptional service every time. We're appreciative and we care. We are Par Lumber. Hi there, it's Les Schwab Tires, reminding you that changing seasons can mean changing road conditions. Introducing the brand new Backcountry AT2 for a quieter ride with improved performance in wet conditions. Because when it comes to keeping your family safe, the right tires help you feel prepared for anything. Seriously, anything. Now save up to $130 when you buy Quattrac tires with financing. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. You're watching Talking Ducks, built by Par Lumber. Welcome back. It's time for a thing of beauty presented by Dr. Lee B. Daniel and Aesthetic Plastic Surgery Live Beautiful. Oregon Athletic Director Rob Mullins trying to make a thing of beauty out of this ugly situation for Oregon. Here are his thoughts on what's next for Oregon. My phone's blowing up. There's no shortage of interest. Um, and so for us, it's, it's about finding the right leader. We've got incredible support uh, inside the program, outside the program, and we'll lean on those folks uh, as well. So uh, Oregon football is going to be better than ever. Um, we're going to crank up the search this afternoon. Uh, we will find the next great leader of Oregon football. I mean, just look back at the last 10, 12 years. Uh, the results speak for themselves. Um, and we have had some turnover, but the success of the program continues. We'll have more on the broader search later, but let's go ahead and take a trip around the Pac-12 brought to you by Eugene Airport. Fly easy, fly E-U-G. And there are some Chip Kelly rumors circulating on Oregon trying to make an aggressive push to get Chip Kelly. We don't know if those are factual or not, but guys, if that even makes sense, is that the right fit for what Oregon needs right now? Because this isn't Chip Kelly from 2008, 2009, 2010. This is a different scene in all of college football. I, I mean... I think it makes sense in a, in a lot of different ways, and probably in some ways it doesn't. Um, I don't think bringing back Chip means you automatically go back to doing what you were doing with Chip. It's a, it is a different era. Um, the blur offense and everything they were doing had a different impact back then um, than it, I think it would have now. I mean, the offense would still produce points as they do, but I think teams are doing the same thing back at you, et cetera, et cetera. But I think he's done a pretty solid job at UCLA with the rebuild, but clearly he hasn't gotten to great heights yet. But if I'm Oregon, I can't really find someone – proven to leave where they are to come to me and if I can lure Chip back yeah I think I go that way and there's no doubt in my mind that Phil Knight and Pat Kilkenny would absolutely do that they tried to talk him to come into coming back before they fired Helfrich actually but he chose to stay with the 49ers um so yeah and by, and by the way when I saw the number on crystal ball 10 years 85 million I'm like if you really want Chip and Chip's like, yeah, I kind of want to stay in L.A., you offer that guy 10 years, 120, give him an offer he can't refuse. But, yeah, I could see it happening uh, from Oregon standpoint. I'm not sure if, if Chip Kelly wants to go back to his, to his uh, former glory years. Yeah, my, my question in this is not that Chip isn't a great coach. I mean, I, I, I think he did a fantastic job. I didn't have any personal experience with him to, to know. But – with what he has done since leaving Oregon and the changes to the game in terms of people catching up, um, 
I, I don't know. It, does he, and, and this, I'm not giving a definitive answer on this. I'm more just kind of talking out loud. And maybe, Coach, this is a question for you. Does, does Chip have the allure now that he did 10 years ago when he was truly, or 15 years ago, when he was truly reinventing the game of football? Or is um, Chip just, you know, on the same playing field as, as anybody else who would want this job? Anything is possible. I don't see it happening simply because I think, as you said, time, both of you said, times have changed. Chip has just got the UCLA program to have a winning record for the first time. Uh, he has struggled since he left Oregon. I think everybody thinks that, yeah, we're coming back to Oregon would help him and help Oregon. And I'm not sure that's the case. I think you could talk about Jeff Tedford, Chris Peterson, Justin Wilcox, I mean, there's are a, we sharing lists, Coach? Are we sharing lists? Because those are my three that I have right. I've got them written down. But right is, here. Co is Coach saying yay to those guys or nay? I'm just saying those are coaches that when you bring up former Duck coaches that are still young enough and active, yes. and want coach that you would have to consider. But I don't think you just. I don't think you stay there. And I think Chip, as we've talked about, has had a variety of of uh, experiences since he left Oregon. And most of them not very positive. And I think he would still honestly prefer to coach in the NFL. And I think at some point he will go back to that, uh, depending on what happens in LA. So uh, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. And I think Chip may be the only one that really knows. I don't. I think that's been some boosters and or people that really aren't totally in touch with Rob Mullins and the people that are making these decisions. Here's one thing about Chip, though. I mean. I'm looking at the stats right here. The leading offense in the conference, scoring offense, UCLA, 36.5 points. So clearly, he can still coach offense. If you give him an elite quarterback, like let's say he had Mariota in UCLA this year, they probably win the Pac-12. Like sometimes that can make all the difference. So if he did come back to Oregon and he went and got a good defensive coordinator, which I'm sure he would, and he got a good staff of recruiters because he isn't really huge on recruiting and he gets the right quarterback, then by all means, he can, he can win again. He's an excellent offensive coach. He's the best I've known and creative and can handle anything, I think, from the standpoint of whatever the defense throws at him, he's got an answer. Now, is he the best head coach I know? I can't say that. When we come back, who will be the next head coach of the Oregon Ducks? We'll take a look at some potential candidates when we come back on Talking Ducks. Do you have a stay-at-home project? We can help. Contact PAR from the comfort of your home. Get a free quote online or call a pro to order your materials. And the best part? We deliver. Call us or visit PAR.com for details. PAR, your project experts for 90 years. Since 1961, Comfort Flow Heating has provided service to more than 50,000 homes and businesses in the Willamette Valley. While the technology and techniques in our industry have changed, our founding principles have remained the same. To provide exceptional service in all areas of our business and for our customers to enjoy their products from us and be comfortable for years to come. From all of us at Comfort Flow, thank you for choosing us. Eugene Airport is a proud part of what makes Western Oregon such a unique place to be. With nonstop routes that connect to hundreds of destinations, fly local, fly EUG. In the heart of the South Willamette Valley, just 12 miles southwest of Eugene, distinctive handcrafted wines are waiting for you at Sylvan Ridge Winery. Sylvan Ridge Wines bring unassuming, casual elegance to your homes, tables, and celebrations, and are best paired with the mainstays of a social gathering. Good food, fond friends, and lively conversation. Discover our wines by visiting our tasting room. For a list of events or to plan your visit, go to sylvanridge.com. Proud partners of the Oregon Ducks.
You're watching Talking Ducks, built by Par Lumber. And we're back now, so let's get to the hot topic brought to you by Comfort Flow Heating, the HVAC industry leader in Western Oregon since 1961. And guys, other than Chip Kelly, who would be some other potential candidates that Oregon should be looking at in a coaching decision that they clearly need to make in the next couple of days here? Well, I mean, I, I think it truly depends on which direction coach, or, uh, Rob Mullins wants to take the program. I mean, if he truly wants to stay on this path of finding the best national coach out there, you know, is it a Tom Herman? Is it a, you know, there, there's, a, there's a list of guys who are, who are available right now who, you know, within the last three, four, five years have been viewed as the guy to um, turn around a, 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 pro, a national program. If you want to somehow come back to this idea of loyalty and come back to, you know, your, your roots or the foundation, which I think a lot of people kind of are a little warmer on that idea, you know, twice feeling left out in the cold by coaches who bolted, I, I think you look at Coach Wilcox, I think you look at Coach Tedford, I think you look at Coach Peterson. I think those are three three people that have shown that not only can they are they tremendous coaches, but they've been around and and know know what Oregon football is. Now, each of them has, a, you know, I'll say issues that you would have to overcome in terms of does Chris, you know, want to come back and coach? Uh, you know, last time I talked to him, he was, you know, he left Washington for a reason. Um, you know, I think, you know, Coach just I think Justin has, um, you know, the, the card we played that he didn't win enough at Cal. You know, Coach Tedford's been gone too long, although I will say he's one of the most adaptable coaches that I've been around. I mean, I, I think there are huge positives for any three of those guys if what you're trying to do is find that balance between the national big-name headliner and getting back to your roots and building that loyalty and building that foundation again at Oregon, which I think people are feeling is, is missing a little bit. I don't think they're looking for balance. I'll, I'll just tell you. <laughs> I think you have to look at guys like Josh Gaddis. Matt Rule, Matt Campbell, Dave Aranda, Joe Brady, the guy who worked the magic at LSU, is out of a job right now. He'd be a great offensive coordinator. I don't think people would want to sacrifice quality for reliability. It's how, what, car, what kind of car do you want to drive, a Mercedes or a VW or whatever the case may be? It has nothing to do, in my opinion now, with look. that's a knee-jerk reaction to another coach leaving for his best, the best job in his mind that he could ever get. Uh, I think Dan, uh, Dan Mullins, excuse me, Rob Mullins needs to go out and find a guy that is going to take this program where Mario has it right now and hopefully keep it at that level or ex exceed that, uh, make it even better. And those guys, like I said, the names I mentioned are probably hot coaches that may or may not be interested, but I think, Oregon, as we've talked about, because of the facilities, because of the support, because we understand the administration knows how important football is now, that they will provide the opportunity with the consultants, the, the staff salaries, which are just as key as the head coach. The staff salaries are what keep a great staff together and why you can keep a, a coordinator like Venables for a long time at Clemson or uh, some of these others that have stayed, you know, why don't they go on? Because they're getting paid head coach salaries. Uh, I think Oregon is willing to do that. And when you have Phil Knight as your number one booster, it, it reverberates across not just this country, but the entire world. So I agree 100%. If you can go out and get a proven big name commodity to leave their good job, or maybe they're elevating up a level, what have you, then by all means, you know, that was the goal six years ago. If you can pull it off, great. Now, we know, reportedly at least, that Mario was offered 10 years, 85. If you're going to pay Mario 10 years, 80, 85, and you're trying to steal someone, you're probably going to have to pay them 10 years, 85. And I think 10 years, 85 gets you in the door with just about anybody, right? So they should have a shot at stealing someone. But if you can't steal someone like that, or you're banging your head doing that, and also you have to remember that that person could come and then leave, and we've discussed what that means, I, I just think... Wilcox, to me, is one safe, and I too, I too believe there's upside. He's been proven to be a really good defensive coach, and Cal's defenses have usually been really good with lesser talent than what Oregon has. 
You want him to then hire an elite level offensive coordinator, which comes down to putting out money. Maybe you put out $2 million for an elite offensive coordinator. You also bring back Keith Hayward, who is his linebackers coach, who was a DB coach here at Oregon, and one of their prime recruiters. He owns Southern California, and he's the guy who brought in Kayvon. He, I mean, some people think Mario magically made that happen. No, that was Keith Hayward recruited Kayvon, brought Kayvon to Oregon. His mom told me straight up that Kayvon would have not have come to Oregon if not for Keith Hayward. So you bring him in, you have him and Wilcox put together a staff of really good recruiters, and then that just generates the energy that allows the glowing Death Star of the facilities to lure people in. And then your classes are going to be top 10. You've got a great head coach. Um, or budding head coach who's a great defensive mind. You got your offensive coordinator. Boom, you're taken off. And guess what? Josh Wilcox is not, or excuse me, Justin Wilcox is not going to leave his for his dream job because Oregon is his dream job. So that's where I would go. Coming up next, we'll do a basketball update on the women's and men's side. And Matt Preem of 24-7 Sports will join us to let us know the ramifications on Oregon football recruiting now that Cristobal is no longer here. You're watching Talking Ducks, built by Par Lumber. It's time for some excellence off the football field, presented by Ferguson Wellman. Ferguson Wellman taking a disciplined approach to investing, and we visit the hardwood where the women's basketball team gets a narrow road victory over the Portland Pilots just up north there on I-5. But Sydney Parrish, how about the game she had? Five made three-pointers off to a career night for her. And the Oregon women's basketball team trying to get back and find some momentum after suffering three straight losses before conference play starts. Obviously, Kelly Graves and company, they have a lot of talent, still dealing with a couple of injuries. But this is a women's basketball team that has showed a lot of fortitude despite the adversity they faced last year and some early season adversity now. For the Oregon men's basketball team, a heartbreaker at home, a loss to Arizona State, in overtime with under 15 seconds left, the Ducks led by one, but the Sun Devils knocked down a three to take a two-point lead, and they would never surrender that as Oregon begins conference play 
0-1, and, and this is an Oregon team that is still trying to bounce back after a couple of tough losses in which they barely managed to score close to 20 points and a half, so still a lot of question marks, but as we know, Dana Altman and his teams usually make their runs in February and March. We'll see if they have some of that late season magic. All right, time now for our recruiting update brought to you by Milan Stoneworks, bringing you the finest stoneworks in the Northwest. Here's Matt Preem of 24-7 Sports and Duck Territory. Well, look, I, I think when Willie Taggart left Oregon, um, the program was in a better place um, at that time. It, it had been proven that you can recruit at a high level. You can, you can bring in the nation's best players. You can sign elite players. You can get guys for unofficials. Um, Taggart opened the door to some ideas that maybe we didn't think were 100% feasible at Oregon. And then Cristobal executed on those, built on those, and the Oregon program is in now yet a, again a better place than when Cristobal arrived. And I think that matters. Um, I think Oregon has to go out. They have to act quickly here. Um, they're under Rob Mullins, the athletic director, is under um, a really difficult position, a rock and a hard place here, if you will, because He's got to make the right hire from a short-term and a long-term perspective, from an on-field productive standpoint, from a recruiting standpoint, from a boosters and fan standpoint. But so he, he has to be very thorough. He has to find the right guy, but he has to do it in an extremely quick manner. Um, but you also don't want to rush into a hire and maybe gloss over some, some of the vetting process or say these the things will get figured out. And they don't. And in two or three years now, all of a sudden, you have to make another coaching change. Um, it, it's I, I think Oregon, if they can ride this, make a solid hire, the recruiting class will probably stay intact for the most part. There will be guys that, that don't stick with with Oregon after crystal ball. But I think you've got an opportunity with the right hire to keep your commits, a good chunk of them, keep a good chunk of your team in, from jumping to the portal. And this team is still going to be loaded in 2022. And so I, I still think they're a top 25 team. Um, you just got to work under extreme pressures and, and under a very tight uh, timeline to find that next head coach. All right, when we come back, we'll talk about Oregon's bowl game. Yes, there is still a bowl game in all of this mess. The Ducks Sooners in the Alamo Bowl will let you know what Oregon needs to do if they want to close the season out with a W. With nine locations in the Pacific Northwest, Paris Cabinet Design Center features everything from outdoor cabinets and countertops to sinks and hardware, thousands of door styles and colors available to order, as well as kitchen and bath cabinets in stock, all available at the Par Cabinet Design Center. Hi there, it's Les Schwab Tires, reminding you that changing seasons can mean changing road conditions. Introducing the brand new Backcountry AT2 for a quieter ride with improved performance in wet conditions. Because when it comes to keeping your family safe, the right tires help you feel prepared for anything. Seriously, anything. Now save up to $130 when you buy Quattrac tires with financing. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. Welcome to your capital Toyota. From the moment you walk through the doors, we're here for you. Buy, sell, trade. We got you covered. It's everything you need in one place. Great service, check. Easy to work with, check. We want you to be happy and it shows in everything we do. Because we respect your time. It's all the quality and convenience in one package. New or Toyota certified pre-owned. Our people are your people. Capital Toyota, it's your way on the parkway.
You're watching Talking Ducks, built by Par Lumber. Welcome back. Let's hit Victory Road, presented by Capital Toyota in Salem. Your way on the Parkway. The Ducks will face the Sooners in the Alamo Bowl. What do you expect to happen in that bowl game, guys? And what do the Ducks need to do in order to get a victory? What do I expect from Oregon? Um, God, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, and you know, yeah, I mean, just so seriously, like you go three weeks ago and it was a great game. And then two weeks ago we were smelly. And then last, or I guess, you know, two weeks, three weeks ago we were smelly. And two weeks ago we were really good against Oregon State. And then last week we were really smelly. And so then, like, I, I don't know. Like it, it's honestly gotten to the point where you just kind of flip a coin with this with this Oregon football team in terms of offense, right? We've known the defense is going to be solid, well, except for those two games against Utah. So, uh, yeah, I have no idea. No idea for Oregon. Um, Aaron, how about you? Well, both teams are going through some emotional issues with their coaches leaving, I'm sure. <clears throat> um, I kind of feel like Stoops might stabilize some of that for Oklahoma. Uh, I just I just look at Intense Oklahoma's coach. offensive prowess. Intense. And I just cannot see them not scoring in the high 30s. And I just don't believe Oregon can match that with their quarterback situation and, and, and their receiver situation. I mean, one of the things that was sort of not really discussed by a lot of the people who were whining about the national, excuse me, the Pac-12 title game and how poorly Brown played was that he was dealing with mostly a lot of young receivers. And I've talked to people, team sources, who say there were some receiver issues in terms of route running and depth being right and cuts being – like, so it wasn't all on Brown. So there's a lot of dysfunction there. So I just can't see how they keep pace with Oklahoma's offense. So I, I just – I think Oklahoma's going to win by 10 or more. I'm going to agree with both of you. I really don't know how the team is going to react. Typically, I think they've – on a big stage – up until this year, the, the Utah game, they've been really good. Mario Cristobal has found a way to motivate his players and to put them, say, in the Pac-12 championship game where they beat people that are the favorites. I don't see them doing that here for some reason. I haven't seen the response from the first Utah game to the second Utah game, which I would have expected to be much closer, much more hard fought, and it wasn't. And that scares me. And especially now with Cristobal gone, who seems to be – the rock of the program or the heart and soul. And you never know. You never know how young people will react. I think Oregon is a talented team, but they do have issues at quarterback and wide receiver, as you mentioned, that, that haven't really, the quarterback's been talked about. He has to be effective as a runner to make the offense go. I I'm trying to figure out why they haven't played somebody else when he is not playing as well. And obviously there's not a lot of quarterback, a lot of confidence yet in the younger quarterbacks, but it is interesting. You never know what a group of young men will do. This game is certainly going to be important. Sometimes you worry about going to a bowl game where you're in a game that you lost and fell down to, and the opponent is much more motivated than you. Well, both of the teams in this game have lost their head coaches. Uh, who wants to save face? Who wants? They both lost their championship game. Who's going to come back and be the one that says, I can overcome this? I don't know. Let me ask you this. You, 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 were, you coached a team, uh, well, two different teams, actually. So the 07 team, when Dixon got injured, things kind of fell apart, and then you guys figured it out. And shockingly to many, just drilled I was South Florida. Was it South Florida? In, in the Sun Bowl. You guys looked amazing. And Roper developed and everything. So, so your team recovered from disappointment. But uh, I would argue that there's been, you know, there's been teams who haven't been able, like the, the team in 06, where things went downhill, and then you guys went to Vegas and played an inferior BYU team, and it was clear that your guys would rather be at the blackjack table. So how, how do you go about trying to avoid that type of letdown as a coach? Well, one of the things that has to happen is the players have to take some either responsibility or involvement. I would say player-led teams are much better than coach-led teams because the players can talk to each other one-on-one, -on -one and they can truly be honest with each other. In the 2007 season, we lost our top three quarterbacks. We had to play two true freshmen the last three games of the season, and we struggled. We should have beaten Oregon State, lost, and we screwed up the field goal attempt at the end of the game twice. But by the time we got to the bowl game, we had time to practice and to instill confidence back in the offense that we could move the football. Uh, in the other year you talked about, there was no confidence and no continuity. We're trying to play two quarterbacks. Uh, and both there, there was a lack of total confidence in either one. So it's all about what happens now in terms of bowl practice leading up to it and whether the kids can have some fun, whether they 
the new coaches, whoever takes the leadership mantle has to be a salesperson, has to be a motivator, an innovator, but also what you have to do is be careful, not work too hard, have some fun, make sure it's fun for the kids and they'll play better. All right, guys, appreciate it as always. Let's go ahead and have a toast brought to you by Sylvan Ridge Winery, proud partners of the Oregon Ducks. And I've got this to say about Mario Cristobal choosing to go to Miami. I can't imagine how difficult of a decision it was for him. He has built something so special here at Oregon. They've had a tremendous amount of success. The culture they've built, the living rooms he's gone into and had kids leave home to come here to Oregon to be a part of all this. And then he's presented really a golden opportunity to go back home and be at his alma mater. And I think as Duck fans, we're all disappointed because we just really respected the character of Mario Cristobal. He is exactly the type of man you want to lead your team as coach. And I don't fault him one bit at all for going to Miami. In fact, I wish him nothing but the best. And he was someone that always showed us a tremendous amount of class, especially in the media. And I know I had a chance to get to know his family a little bit. And I wish them well. And these opportunities don't come by very often for you to go to your alma mater and be a coach there and to make a lasting impact there. So Mario, thanks for everything. Best of luck. And for Oregon, obviously, this fan base is tremendous. There's going to be a great core of players that remain. There's still a lot to be said about success in Eugene. Obviously, it's a little murky right now. But I think Rob Mullins and crew will get the job done. And on that note, before we conclude this episode of Talking Ducks, Anthony Newman, we're thinking of you and your family. We hope that uh, everyone is doing well. Your family's in our prayers here, my man, and we can't wait to see you next time. That'll do it for this edition. Thanks again for joining us.